American Firearms Association. This is the American Firearms Association show, and we have huge updates for you. We have big things, very big things happening in state capitals all across the country. And today, um, the American Firearms Association staff, volunteers, the team is spread all across the nation in state capitals like Ohio and in Alabama, Missouri, uh, where awesome things are happening for the Second Amendment. You're going to want to get on board here. You're going to want to watch this. We're probably coming to a state near you if we're not already on the screen with you today. Again, we are the American Firearms Association taking this fight to the radical left, taking it to uh, Joe Biden and his team and his schemers and losers all across the country. So, again, committee hearings were happening on constitutional carry in a lot of different states. We're going to hear updates from uh, my brother Chris and uh, Rob with Ohio Gun Owners and AFA. We have Alex down the bottom right with the Alabama Firearms Association, our state affiliate in Alabama. We have my brother Aaron uh, with the Missouri Firearms Coalition checking in on a huge uh, Supreme Court cases and things happening in Missouri right now. So get on board. Let us know where you're watching from. Get in the chat. Share this video. This is going to be a phenomenal update. Uh, Chris, what do you know? Well, and I'll, I'll just say right out of the gate before before we get too far into it. If it looks like our head is on a swivel and we're always looking around, we always, especially when, like, when we are in an, a, sta a state capitol building, we want to know what lobbyists are paying attention, what people are trying to get close. What people are trying to take pictures and stuff of. So if it if it looks like we're a little bit like on edge, we are. We always are. Uh, whenever we're at a state capitol building. But just a couple of moments ago, we got out of the Ohio House Government Oversight Committee hearing uh, in the Ohio Legislature. Uh, of course, there's a, there's kind of a battle right now going on to see what state can become the 22nd uh, constitutional carry state. We're trying very hard to make Ohio number 2022. 20, um, but just a couple of moments ago, um, after Ohio Gun Owners, the state affiliate of the American Firearms Association, went to our membership and mobilized them through direct emails, through text messaging, putting our members in contact with the members of this committee, um, we absolutely savaged them and forced them to do what they absolutely did not want to do, and that was start holding hearings again on constitutional carry. The situation is... Right now, we've got the House. They passed it once, their version. The Senate passed their version. But before we can get this bill and slam it on Governor DeWine's desk, which is right down that hall down there, by the way, uh, before we can do that, we need uh, to get one of the chambers to pass the other chamber's bill. This committee, just like, just like all the, the, the committees that you're going to see on this video here today, this committee is being pressured hardcore by the left to stop the bill, to water the bill down. We've, we've, uh, we've been through that process already earlier this year with this committee, or last year, late last year, trying to water the bill down. And only because the mobilized members of AFA and OGO in the state of Ohio are absolutely pouring the pressure on, are, the, are we finally getting this bill to move forward? And they, they held, they didn't want to do it. Number one, they didn't want to do it. But number yeah. two, today was the second hearing this week <laughs> that they held on constitutional carry. It's amazing. And uh, it's, it's also amazing because this committee that we're talking about, this government oversight committee, usually only meets on Thursday mornings. Right, um, right. Late last week, they scheduled a hearing for Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> and so it's just... And it's, and, and, it's, and it's only because, like, the grassroots members yeah. of Ohio gun owners and AFA in Ohio are like this this marching in lockstep bunch of 800-pound gorillas saying, we want our freedoms back. You guys are going to deliver or we're coming after you in the Republican primaries. And that's the message. I mean, honestly, these half these people around here, the lobbyists, the legislators, they're terrified of Ohio gun owners because we're like this big bully who's like, we want our freedom back. We want our freedom back. And if you don't yeah. deliver... We're going to deliver in the next election. And we don't play like all the other guys play. Right, exactly. We, we, well, we take the rule book and we throw it right out and we do whatever is necessary to get the job done. What's going on in Alabama, though? I want to I want to hear an oh, update man. on that because we were going at the same time, I think. I was testifying on, were, on our members' behalf. What was going on down there in Atlanta or in, uh, in Alabama, so, Alex? Same old, same old. Uh, as far as the opposition, but we had the public safety committee hearing on 
constitutional carry here in Alabama. Now, passed out of the Senate uh, committee last year, no problem. But now they're having a lot of difficulty getting through public safety. And from what we're hearing from inside the buildings, it's not because there's a majority of Democrats on the committee that aren't pa- voting to pass this. There are Republicans who are not willing to vote to pass this. Surprise, well, surprise. Yeah. That Big doesn't surprise. shock anyone here at AFA. Not one bit. But, you know, what? What their, their strong opposition in the crowd, their strong opposition to crowd is to, to this bill is this crowd of sheriffs and deputies that all walk in. They present the same lion, commie, mommy uh, statistics on crime rates bought and paid for by Bloomberg. So, no, we had a great opportunity to stand up there uh, and, and tell the truth is what it is, is. These sheriffs and deputies want one thing. They want to pad their pockets with fees. They like licensing. They love licensing our freedoms. And also, they like having that registry. So, I mean, we the testimony has been done. The vote hasn't happened yet. Probably happen next week. But we're hearing we're hearing some some rumblings that we you know there's Republicans that may not want it to pass, and that's disgusting. That's a shame. Oh, that would, and it's always and it's always the chiefs of police. You know what I mean? It's always the it's always the liberal chiefs of police who weren't yeah. voted in. They're not they're not sheriffs. It's they're appointed by liberal mayors to be talking heads to pretend to represent the beat cops. They pretend to represent the cops who are on the ground actually right. fighting against crime, and uh, right. and so they they try they run these chiefs of police out there all in their suits to act and that's not what yep. it is at all like alex said bought and paid for by bloomberg's people um and they don't represent the 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 actual police who are fighting against crime and trying to stop the lawlessness and the riots that have come from biden's america over the last year um you know that's that's, that's one of the major problems here that's that's exactly right that's not only true in alabama that's not only true in georgia it's true right here in Ohio as well as well as in Pennsylvania. Um, if if sheriffs ever come in and testify against the bill, it's it's the inner city sheriffs. It's like the big yeah, like here in Ohio right now. I mean, it's the Franklin County Sheriff. It's the you know it's the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. And of course, you never see like the deputies themselves in here, right? right? Yeah. Not that, and like Ben was saying just a second ago. It's always. It's always the leadership. It's never the deputies because the deputies are all messaging our organization. They're all members of Ohio gun owners saying, hey, my freaking dumb boss is going to be there testifying against these bills. I want to let you know law enforcement supports these bills 100 percent, the real law enforcement, but not these politicized people who are way more um, concerned about their entangling alliances with these other associations and their and their colleagues. And so it's, it's important so, for everybody to understand. We represent the beat cops. Absolutely. Our side, the, law, the side of law and order, the side of freedom, has all of the cops and all of the deputies on our side. The politicized leadership? Nah, they're with the left. Yep. And the best That's way, why, guys, we can- if you... If you like that, guys, we need you to fight with the American Firearms Association. You're watching it right now in live time as our teams are all across the country right now advocating on behalf of the Second Amendment, standing up against tyrants, standing up against politically motivated fake chiefs of police, standing up against a radical left. And like Alex is talking about, Chris is talking about here, rhinos, Republicans in name only who are standing up in opposition against our freedoms. Go to joinafa.org, become an, uh, become a member of the American Firearms Association. We need you on our team. We're growing at record pace, lightning fast, and we need you on our team because gun owners are demanding more. We've been screwed and screwed and screwed yeah. by the left, by the right, by other so-called gun rights organizations, by people like the NRA. They have screwed gun owners for literally decades. We are taking this fight, not just the D.C., which we're doing very much right now, but in state capitals all across America. And like I said, we're probably coming to a state near you. And we need your help to continue this expansion of freedom, this fight against these people. I just watched Alex. I just watched him 
on camera, get in the face of these lying SOBs and say, you're doing this for the tax dollars. You're doing this because you're commies. You're doing this to keep your thumb on top of the people of Alabama. And nobody else is doing that stuff. Nobody does that but the American well, firearms. It's, everybody it's, gives it's, these it's, people deference. Everybody always, for generations in the gun rights community, always said, well, if the law enforcement uh, is opposed to it, we have to stand down. You support cops, don't you? The American Firearms Association has always said, we back the blue as long as they back the Constitution. Because at the Amen. end of the day, that's their job is to uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution. When they do that, we're their best allies. When they don't do that, then, guys, Absolutely. we're going to call them out for what they are because it's always about the money. I'm going to pivot here into Missouri here for just a moment, and we're getting asked okay. about Georgia. Aaron, yeah, before you do, I just want to zero right back in on what you said, and, and I hope people saw that, but – we absolutely support law enforcement as long as they support the Constitution. But the, the point of the matter here is all the beat cops, all the street cops, they are already on our side. It's only yeah, exactly. these fringe radical leadership members that are the ones that are, tra that, are, that are totally abusing their positions to try to derail gun rights. So, uh, keep, take it from there, Aaron. Sorry it's, about it's just, it's, a, it's a disgusting betrayal of the yeah. legacy of their profession. Because yeah. a generation ago, these people stood for freedom and they stood up with gun owners like us to help advance that in state capitals on their yeah. own nickel. These days, they flood the capital on taxpayer dimes and driving taxpayer cars I to oppose that. our gun rights. Yes, so, the, so the Missouri situation right now, we're just in the state capitol for the last two days here in Missouri. Just two days ago now, the uh, DOJ flew their team of lawyers into Missouri trying to get the Supreme Court in Missouri to overturn Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act. This was a, a program run directly and exclusively by Missouri Firearms Coalition, AFA's in-state affiliate. And what it has done is just shook the entire Biden administration by its head because it says that Missouri cops have to enforce Missouri laws. They may not enforce the tyranny that comes off of Biden's executive actions off of his desk. And when you see the DOJ physically present here in Jeff City, Missouri, you know exactly that they, they know what's at stake. If SAPA stands in Missouri, if they cannot get it overturned, and if SAPA begins to, 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 to it will, it will explode across the country. Absolutely. And so we had major action in the Supreme Court yesterday, uh, two days ago here in Missouri. And as always is the case, it's the prosecuting attorneys and it's the department heads from St. Louis, Kansas City, Columbia, Springfield. These are the people on the ground here in Missouri trying to attack freedom. You know, one one quick mention on that. Missouri has very good laws when it comes to asset forfeiture. Local cops can't get much off yep. of citizens in Missouri. Listen, but listen to this, everybody. Listen to this. This is they always say in politics, follow the money, right? Follow listen money. to this right here. But up until we passed SAPA last year here in Missouri, Missouri cops could bypass Missouri's strong asset forfeiture laws by doing task force work with the feds. And when a local jurisdiction here in Missouri is teamed up with the feds and a task force, they get to keep 80% of the money that is confiscated across the state. Disgusting. Now, sometimes that comes from drug dealers, from thugs, from gangsters. Sometimes it comes from businessmen who are heading home with a cash deposit. However, it comes up, 80% yep. goes into their pocket. We have no idea where that goes. Pension funds, new cars, new buildings. We have no idea. It's always about the money, and it's always about the power. That's, the, that's what's going on. But if our legal team is successful, if AFA's team is successful – in upholding SAPA here in Missouri, it's going to be on in Red America like they've never seen before because SAPA is going to be spreading like wildfire. We're very, very happy with what's going on here in Missouri. Well, that's uh, that's a great point that you bring up there, Aaron. I think so. We're passing SAPA, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, House Bill 62, right here in Ohio. We're pat we're working on Senate Bill 624 in the Pennsylvania Senate right now. But I think there's a lot of quizzling weak. Republican leadership. And, and isn't that kind of an oxymoron? I mean, like the redundancy 
when I say that quizzling weak Republican leadership, there's only been one guy that I can think of that's been strong uh, any, with any recency. But these people are terrified of going out and picking a fight with Joe Biden's administration. That's why what's happening with Missouri right now with uh, with the uh, Missouri Firearms Coalition and their Second Amendment Preservation Act is so important because because these Republicans are so weak, they very rarely want to take a leadership role, they very rarely want to step up and fight back. And they, they want the, the path laid out before them. So kind of like in 2006, we had to have Florida pass the first stand your ground law and yeah. then kaboom, they all passed like a freight train. What's going on right now with AFA and our, the in-state affiliate, the Missouri Firearms Coalition, is the most substantial and consequential defense of gun rights that's been passed at the state legislature in American history. Because it, it essentially takes the, 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 the radical left federal government, federal gun control and federal gun control orders like Biden's orders. And it says, go pound sand. Uh, your, your laws are not enforceable here in the state of Pennsylvania by our law enforcement. And folks, we all know uh, the states are the law and are, are the, the uh, hold police powers in our system of government. The federal government relies on state law enforcement to enforce the majority of its orders. So if you take away the ability for the federal government to enforce federal gun control, it essentially destroys it. This is fundamental. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, and to be very clear about this, you know, we all the, the five of us guys you see here right now, we were having conversations about this back in 2020 because God forbid, you know, uh, we saw Joe Biden get in the White House and we did. We yep. knew that we had to have a fallback plan in Red America to deal with executive orders. And NRA attacked the hell out of SAPA. Oh, GOA yeah. called SAPA a waste of time. NAGR said SAPA was a laughing stock. FPC has been fighting behind the scenes to, sh to attack this uh, through court actions and whatnot. But we damn well knew that if we don't have a protection at the state level, we're going to be steamrolled by executive yep. orders. And the other thing that we knew way back when was that, you know, this is not just about guns. This is not just about guns. When the yeah. states reassert their state sovereignty oh, yeah. and they yeah, tell yeah, a tyrannical, out of control White House to kiss our ass, that has benefit on guns, that has benefit on the unborn, that has benefit on mask mandates, has benefit on jab mandates. Every area you can think of, when the states reassert their right, like Kenny says, let's go Brandon, when they effectively say, let's go Brandon, yes. at the red state level, this has benefit in every red state in the country and on issues far beyond just the Second Amendment. Well, we've said this many times points. in the past. Uh, we've said many I'll finish off with this real quick, but Go I ahead. had gentlemen coming up to me today, gun owners in Alabama coming up to me today and asking if I had heard of the Second Amendment Preservation Act in Missouri, because they know <laughs> that freedom for them would be protected if they lived in Missouri and they want it here. They want it here. It's already spreading by word of mouth. Thanks to you guys, at the members of AFA, that we have Missouri has the best in the nation protection from Joe Biden. Yep. That's fabulous. It really is. Um, guys, this is this is the fight right now. This is what we're dealing with all across the country. In many ways, we've said this, we've said this many times in the past. The radical left always has a long-term strategy. They always know where they want America to be in five years, where they want America to be in 10 years. And they're constantly chipping, 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 like with a pickaxe right through a rock. And they're getting their way through it over the course of time on the right in many ways we've not been that way and instead we kind of like a decade passes and then we look back and go oh my gosh I, I i all of a sudden i remember what life was like back in 2010 but now in 2022 i don't even recognize it here at the american firearms association we are in many ways just like them we have a long-term strategy a long-term goal like yep. aaron said when uh, in 2020, we were talking about this stuff, we immediately went to the drawing board and said, what law can we pass that protects Americans from the federal government, from tyrannical government? What can we do? And that is when- And to piss off out, Joe Biden. And to piss off I mean, we're not going to lie about our personal motives here too. We wanted to piss <laughs> him off. <laughs> Keep going, Ben. And we, and we went right to work. We went right to work in Missouri and got 
it done. Our members of the American Firearms Association, the Missouri Firearms Coalition, got this fight done in the state of Missouri, and now we're fighting to protect it. So this is the fight. Get on board. Join AFA.org. Join AFA.org. Every membership comes with a Freedom T-shirt. Uh, we want Amen. you guys to have that. Amen. Yeah, we want you guys to have that to show off your love uh, for the for the Second Amendment. One thing I want to mention now, Aaron and Alex, you guys were just in uh, Atlanta just the other day. Were you not uh, testifying in front of committee on behalf of constitutional carry in Georgia? Uh, tell us what's going on there. Yeah, a lot of questions in the comments right now from GGO members. I'm not surprised. Jerry Shire is asking. Terry Archer is asking. Guys, here's where we stand right now. For the first time ever in Georgia, we've got constitutional carry through the first Judiciary Committee in the Senate, thanks to Senator Jason Anavitarte and 30, help me, Alex, 31 co-sponsors we 31, have, I believe, 31. On, on GGO's bill, Senate Bill 319. Sure. So there's, been some, there's been some delays over the last couple of days, but right now, our information right now is that we will likely see the final committee action in the Rules Committee uh, as early as Friday, this week Friday, and we could be teed off for a full vote in the Georgia Senate as early as a Monday or Tuesday of next week. GGO staff will be there in the Capitol, as always, beating people's backsides who are trying to hold this down, and um, you'll, you'll see me and Alex there for sure in person. Oh, yeah. GGO is close. We are close to making this happen, but we are not by any means uh, done yet. The pressure has got to come and rain down continually on that legislative body. We have Brian Kemp is scared, and we love it. We love it when governors are scared of gun owners. God, we love that. Brian Kemp is scared. He doesn't want to deal with this, this, this uh, primary problem with Purdue. He wants to deliver a win, trying to bribe gun owners. Maybe it works for him. Maybe it doesn't. I don't care yeah. for right now. We're using this pressure to ram this thing through, but this is only happening because Georgia Gunners members have been relentless on this. And so keep the pressure coming here in the state capitol in Georgia as well, guys. Much coming on this later on this week and early next week yes. in Atlanta. So we are like, doing it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. We are doing everything. Rob and I are doing everything that we can to make sure that Ohio is the 22nd constitutional yeah. care state we're going to try to get yeah. that job done yeah. there's a race going on right now i'm, I'm professionally interested in this OGO members were talking to yes you. exactly ogo <laughs> we got to push a constitutional carry over the line in not, a race in georgia the devil went down there we're the devil in columbus you know we, we have this motto here at ohio gun owners in fact i played it in committee a couple of weeks ago the old song where there's a whip there's a way We've been whipping the heck out of the Ohio General Assembly now for two years, on, or for four years now, on constitutional carry. And, folks, we're about to make it happen. There's, it's time to hit the gas. It's 2022 it. in America. It is time to hit the gas, go full bore, no apologies, no looking over our shoulders. And I've been doing that a lot around here because I'm looking for all the scumbag lobbyists that are always circling through this building. But it is time to take no prisoners, to pass all the freedoms, get them all back, and, and take advantage of this situation we're in right now. This is, this is why, this is why you've got to get involved with the yeah. American Firearms Association. Because, look, right here in this video, we've got guys in Alabama, guys in Georgia, guys in Ohio. And it's the same thing. Republican states, red states that are run by, by, by pathetic, weak-kneed moderates. Weak. And the only Weak. reason – why constitutional carry is moving in Atlanta, moving in Ohio, moving right now in Alabama is because for the first time, these guys are feeling pressure from the right. They're used to having the NRA come in there and kiss their ass, protect them, give them an A plus at election time. That's always been the mantra. And the rest of the national gun groups, they never even show up. But we're here beating on these people and reminding them, whether it's Brian Kemp, whether it's Mike DeWine, <laughs> whether it's lawmakers in, uh, in Alabama, you're going to pay a price. I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that they never show up. I would say that they are very keen on being in the room as bills get signed into law or after the hard work is done and the bills yeah. are already on their way to passage. You they will never see everybody. Up. They never see show them all up show during up. the real fight. They never show yeah. up to beat, beat on people when it matters. Sure. One yard line, everyone's going to watch Brady toss that puppy in there. But when it comes to getting us across that finish line, there are no shows. It's pathetic.
Yep. I want to give a big shout out, guys, really quick uh, to uh, Kong Lee. He's a tremendous supporter of Minnesota Gun Rights, where I work. Uh, the guy's a rock star. And I want to give a shout out quick to some of the new members really quick. Joe Taylor oh, yeah. just became a member of the American Firearms Association. John just became a member of the American Firearms Association. Chris just became a member of AFA. Your T-shirt <laughs> will be in the mail soon, my man. I know Chris Dorr is always very happy when Chris's <laughs> get on board. Best uh, name in the world. That's right. Bill Hahn just became a member of AFA. Randy joined only a few minutes ago. Uh, another Chris, Chris Dunbar. I won't say where they're Good. from. Uh, and uh, Zachary, Zachary just joined. And Wayne's membership came through 20 seconds ago. These are just a few of the American Firearms Association members who have joined just on this live broadcast. We want you to be a part of that. Go to joinafa.org to become a member of this organization. We are taking this fight. You're hearing it this whole time. We've passed monumental pro-gun legislation like the Second Amendment Preservation Act in, in, uh, in Missouri. We're moving constitutional carry in states all across the country, getting in the faces of the anti-gun left, these politicians who don't want to do a damn thing for the people, and like Chris was just saying a minute ago, now is our time. Now is the time with Biden in office. This is our chance to ram pro-gun legislation through legislatures all across America and continue to advance these pro-gun bills in D.C. and stop the gun control that's moving there. Go to joinafa.org, become a member today, uh, and get on board. Alex, I want to double check. There was... Was there a vote today on constitutional carry in Alabama? Or no, there's not a down? vote in the. No, there's not going to be a vote in the House Public Safety Committee. They have testimony one day, and then they have vote another day. So that way we can't sit there and watch which one of them is voting for and against. It's sad. <laughs> there you go. It's sad. So, you know Chris, something else, Chris? I know we're wrapping up here, but Chris, you and I have something else very similar. You in Ohio, me in Alabama. We have super majorities. We have super yep. majorities on an election year. It should Georgia. be free pickings for freedom. Not only that, but we've had re Republican super majorities in this state for, for forever, yeah. like since oh, before, before, before Moses got the Ten Commandments. I mean, Ohio was Republican super majorities. <laughs> and, yet, and yet Ohio consistently is in the bottom 25 of the, of the 50 states in actually passing – pro-gun bills. There's a very entrenched Republican establishment. But of course, that's what we're up against everywhere. People, these people, they're all, yep. they're all, they're all degenerate politicians. They want to maintain power. It's what their livelihoods become. It's how they get their self-worth. They don't care about their families. They don't care about freedom. They don't care about the future. They don't care about our wonderful heritage as Americans. They don't give yep. a rat's ass about that. They care no, about I'm political dead. power, political power only. And so they do everything they can to stop this stuff. That's why the AFA, OGO, PFA, all these groups that you're watching right now, that's why our model of doing gun politics, just absolutely going after them viciously during the legislative season and during the election season is so effective because they realize very quickly, oh, it's in my political best interest now to finally do what the gun rights community wants me to do. So guys, Go to joinafa.org, sign up and become a member if you're not already. If you're watching in one of these other states, you know, you can, we're definitely at, if, even if you live in like Illinois or California or something like that, where, where your, your rights are under total annihilation at the state level, please join with AFA because this organization yeah. is working on passing massive expansions of freedom in states like Missouri that will have a, a, a rippling effect yeah. that will have a court wide effect on your rights in these other states. And so please join with us. We can save other states as well. Go to joinafa.org, sign up and become a member. I think the, the membership started like 35 bucks a day, uh, 10 cents or 35 bucks a year, 10 yeah. cents a day. Um, and and, and uh, we can throw that graphic up there again, but absolutely, um, it's, it's very cheap insurance to make sure that we maintain our freedoms for those that are counting on us to give them to them uh, after we pass on. So please join with us today. We'd love to have you. Uh, we'll never betray you. We'll never lie to you. We will always tell the truth and we will always give it 150,000% like we do every dang day uh, here. So um, 
Yeah, I want to throw in there. Robert, Robert just bought a uh, hundred and twenty-five dollar. Oh, Robert. Uh, <laughs> Patriot leather. There you go, Rob. Rob's. Well, we got Rob's on here. Just bought a hundred and twenty-five dollar Patriot level membership. Thank you oh. very much, Robert. Thank uh, you, Garland. Rob. Garland Thanks. just became a member a moment ago. Eric, I see you in the comments section here. Eric's a stud. Uh, Eric just bought a membership with the American Firearms Association. Uh, William Ray picked up a membership just a second ago. We have Mark yep. bought one as well. Uh, Daryl has joined on as a member as well today. Thank you guys Thanks. very much yeah. for your help. Man, I, I, I'm sorry. I see Mark Baker, all my IGO guys on here. I got to give a quick, very brief shout out. If you're in Iowa, we're going to have a live video later on today with representative Jeff Shipley, Iowa just filed. We just got our house bill filed uh, yesterday for SAPA in Des Moines. NPR is losing their effing minds. And we have 18, <laughs> co-sponsors on this bill i'm not a math major i love poli sci what can i say but we got 60 republicans in the house in des moines and we have 18 or maybe it was 19 co-sponsors it was 19 you told me where i come from it's roughly one third of the caucus already on board this bill and what's really cool to me is that it's all the young lawmakers in des moines oh, yeah. the old guard all the old fuds that i have been fighting with for god 15 years they're not on it they're not on it, but the young guys, the young gals who've been in office for five minutes or two or three years, they're all jumping on board. So a major shout out to Representative Jeff Shipley. And for the Iowans who are watching, we're going to have a major video tonight with Representative Shipley live on our platform with a major update. You're not going to want to miss it. Yeah, there's actually there's actually so much more we can talk about, but it's really difficult yeah. to talk about every single state where we're working in right now to advance. Again, I I work uh, primarily for Minnesota Gun Rights and the Wisconsin Firearms Coalition and and many other places as well. And I haven't even talked about what's happening in Minnesota right now. So, uh, like Aaron, I'm gonna come back around with some live shows for you guys in these specific states, talking about what's going on in your state capitol building. Uh, going forward so if we didn't touch on uh, if we didn't touch on uh, the the states that you're from uh, we will get back around to we'll that be there. Yeah. yeah we'll be there very yeah. soon terry just made a contribution i have his name up here terry you're a stud made a contribution to the american firearms association patricia we love the ladies ladies are phenomenal no, patricia, I know. Just, right now yeah. but rick, Patty, rick rick just made a thousand dollar uh, membership and a thousand dollar membership to the American Firearm Association just a couple of seconds ago from Washington State. This is what you meant. This is what Chris Thank said a few sir. minutes ago. It doesn't matter yep. if you're in red America, if you're in blue America. This fight for freedom, if we don't make it and if we don't win it, it's going to overwhelm all of our states. They're not going to yep. stop on the left coast and the east coast, they're going to come for everybody everywhere. And so when we see people like Rick, from from behind the curtain you might say in washington state to see a guy like rick drop a thousand dollars in a membership with afa that is a that wow. that is a major investment in freedom rick and it says a lot about the kind of man that you clearly are so thank you for your your massive uh membership just now to the american firearms association That's yeah amazing um patty i want to throw that in there patty hodges she's a long patty. time Patty. She's a long time supporter of the yes. Second Amendment, and we love and, people. And have like you ever her. noticed how, like, conservative women, pro gun women, they just look so much more attractive it's true. than any Democrat <laughs> no, women or, or leftist women? They all look no. like, well, what they look like what their worldview really manifests itself. They look bitter, they look angry, they look ugly uh, outside yeah. because they're ugly yeah. inside. People like Patty, they're beautiful in every way. Um, and uh, we're very thankful to have their support. And, um, you know, it's, it's just it's a real honor for us to, to get that. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Guys, I think that's what we have for right now. Unless somebody else has something yeah. they want to add to this. Uh, no. to this we uh, we actually ahead. have committee again at about three o'clock. So we got to get bouncing and uh, session starts here in Ohio in just a couple of minutes. So we got to bounce, too. Thanks for ending this. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll turn it back to you, Ben. All right. Hey, thank you guys very much for joining. Do me a favor. Share this video with your family and friends. Facebook is slaughtering uh, anybody who's conservative, anybody yeah. who's anybody who loves America. They hate people like us and they do whatever they can to make sure this information doesn't get out. They sure as hell hate videos like this uh, that lay out um, that lay yeah. out 
everything yeah. that's going on in so many different places and show the advancement of freedom and the pushback that tyrants are getting in a major, major way right now. So send this out to your family and friends. Make sure they get a chance to hop on board. Thank you very much for joining. If you gave $5, thank you. If you gave $1,000, Thank you. We can't do this without you. We need the numbers of gun owners who are getting on board and pushing back, waking up to the, like we're talking about here, the NRA selling us out. Uh, liberal chiefs of police in states all across the country in the capitals selling us out. Rhino Republicans selling us out. Um, you know, the, the radical left Democrats sure as hell selling us out. We're fighting back. We know who the enemies are. We're pushing back with everything we've got. And we want you guys uh, with us on this deal. Yep. Yeah, like so, Rob just said, and we know how to fight. We're good at oh, fighting yeah. this fight. So, yeah. Yeah. We're winners. We talk about we've passed so many pro-gun bills. Our members are the biggest studs in the Second Amendment movement in America. We Very passed good. the pro-gun bills. We stopped the gun control. Again, we could talk literally all day. We could talk till dinner time tonight about all the things that we've stopped and all the things that have been passed by the members of these organizations and the American Firearms Association. So if you don't know who the heck we are, if you don't know what, join, join up, get on board. We'll have a lot more information for you in the very near future on all of these fights. We'll be back with another live stream very soon. Uh, share it around, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Stay safe.